A glomus tumor is a perivascular mesenchymal neoplasm which is composed of cells closely resembling modified smooth muscle cells of the normal glomus body. The glomus body, also called glomus apparatus, is a component of the dermis layer of the skin and it is involved in the body temperature regulation. If you ever wondered why you have cold feet or cold fingers, uh, then you should know that the glomus body is responsible for that. It consists of an arterial venous shunt and it is surrounded by a capsule of connective tissue. Most of the glomus bodies can be found in the fingers and toes. And when we are exposed to cold temperatures, uh, the glomus body is responsible for vasoconstriction and shunting the blood away from the skin surface. It is basically a mechanism to prevent heat loss, however, it could be quite annoying, especially for some people like me. The glomus bodies consist of multiple layers of um, so-called myoepithelioid cells. And uh, these cells are then responsible for the prominent vasoconstriction. And uh, these cells can sometimes create so-called so -called glomus tumor. The glomus tumor is um, most commonly localized in the distal extremities, especially underneath the, the fingernails and toenails simply because we have a lot of glomus bodies in these areas. Macroscopically, they look like well-circumscribed small nodules which have red-blue color because they have a lot of uh, blood vessels. Also under the microscope, we can see well-circumscribed nodular lesion with a <clears throat> thin fibrous capsule. Here we can see the inked margin. This is the adipose tissue and then the fibrous tissue and smooth muscle cells. And on the higher magnification, we can see small eccrine glands. So we are probably somewhere in the subepidermal or subdermal or dermal area. Here we have the nerves. And if we, uh, if we go closer, we can recognize a lot of blood vessels here lined by endothelial cells. And these blood vessels are surrounded by uniform cells. These cells have round oval-shaped nuclei, which are very uniform and bland. They have slightly eosinophilic or neutrophilic, mildly granular cytoplasm, and uh, they are organized in small, solid, perivascular nests. All of these central structures, those are endothelial cells and uh, small blood vessels. In between these solid nests, uh, we can find the connective tissue here. Mitotic activity is not very prominent. The nuclei are associated with very lightly granular chromatin, and therefore this tumor can be sometimes confused uh, with neuroectodermal tumor. These cells, uh, these cells look somehow similar to neuroectodermal cells. Uh, I'm sorry, neuroendocrine cells with neuroendocrine tumor with a typical salt and pepper appearance of the nuclei. And therefore, immunohistochemistry is quite useful in these cases. These cells in the glomus tumor are actually modified smooth muscle cells, and therefore they would be positive for the smooth, smooth muscle cells markers like uh, smooth muscle actin or caldesmone. And they would be negative for cytokeratins and synaptophysin and chromogranin. Neuroendocrine cells in the neuroendocrine tumor, on the other hand, would be positive for neuroendocrine markers like synaptophysin and chromogranin, and also uh, cytokeratin would be positive, SMA and caldesmone would be negative. The blood vessels can sometimes be larger, irregular, and slightly ectotic, and they can have so-called staghorn appearance, which is a common name used to describe these elongated, arborizing blood vessels simply because it resembles staghorn. Staghorn blood vessels are commonly associated with solitary fibrous tumor, but we can find them in uh, many more tumors, and uh, we can find them also, also in glomus tumors. The vascular component can be sometimes prominent, and the blood vessels can be ectatic, and these tumors are commonly called glomangioma. It is technically a variant of the glomus tumor with more prominent vascular component. Uh, these glomangiomas are usually less, uh, less circumscribed. They sometimes resemble cavernous hemangiomas and uh, they can be associated with a secondary thrombosis in, in these ectatic blood vessels. Glomus tumor is usually solitary. It is a benign tumor and is usually less, 
It usually measures less than uh, one centimeter in diameter. It has excellent prognosis, however, a small percentage of the cases can recur locally. Malignant glomus tumors exist, however, uh, they have different morphology. They have marked nuclear atypia, um, more prominent mitotic activity. We can find atypical mitotic figures. The cells are usually spindled and uh, atypical. Thanks for watching.